burning's the fastest, quickest, most economical way of treating a paddock. Uh, invasive native scrub, uh, if I've got heaps of scrub, I don't have grazing. It's, it's as simple as that. Without grass, you've got nothing uh, in a grazing operation. And there's no doubt about it that uh, the population of the world, the way, the way it's going, that uh, we only need every bit of uh, grazing and cropping country that we can find uh, in the foreseeable future of, of maybe 30, only 30 years away. It's not far off. Yeah, one of the problems about uh, scrub, invasive native scrub, is that when it gets thick, you've got no grasses on the ground at all. So if you do happen to get rain, and quite often get spasmodic storms, you get an inch of rain and it just washes straight off the ground. It doesn't, doesn't stay there, it washes away. So while well, the scrub's there, the ground's bare, everything disappears. You get any wind about, you've got a dust storm. Once the scrub's gone and it grasses up, and we do happen to get a storm, every drop of water stays where it's landed. The grasses hold it there, and um, at that point the soil seemed to do a lot better. At the moment we've got a lot of grass on the ground, a lot of decaying matter, and that's building the soil structure up all the time. So our soils, once we get the scrub down and the grass is growing, the soils automatically improve themselves. This property is called Remington. It's about uh, 100 kilometres west of Wilgut. It's mainly uh, red soil. I guess the main production line is sheep. Uh, we do run a few cattle. All in all, given that some years ago my parents or grandparents actually acquired the property in the 1930s uh, and it was quite good land in those days, it was considered some of the best in the area and then over the last, uh, I guess the last 30 or 40 years it scrubbed up quite severely and we knew we had to do something so we, we got in and started clearing. This paddock we finished clearing it uh, I guess around uh, oh, year 2000, very dry at the time and we didn't get a chance to burn it for several years. We burned it somewhere around 2008, 2009. Uh, we did an autumn burn, figuring that um, the butter and box would have less chance of uh, surviving a um, burn that was done in the autumn, especially when it gets cold in the winter and the plants go dormant. We started lighting it and the next thing it took off and about two and a half thousand acres in this paddock and within four hours it was totally burnt and uh, we came back next morning to light it up again and sort of burn out any areas we'd missed and it started raining I think about nine o'clock in the morning and uh, within a week we had green feed all over it and the results today is just uh, grass on top of grass, you, you're lucky to see the ground. It's been a big difference from where we were uh, certainly ten years ago. This paddock couldn't carry 200 sheep in it, uh, weathers, and having cleared it we can now put a thousand in it, leave them here for six months and um, have no feed shortage at all. And that's even in a dry year. In a, in a year where it's raining a bit, um, yeah, they could stay there all year round. Before we cleared this land, we were lucky to have two or three varieties of grass. Now we have 10 or 15 varieties of grass uh, in any area on it. You know, in a square metre or two, you'd find that number of different grasses. So. Uh, once we burnt our land, the grasses came back. The seed was already in the soil, it didn't take it long to, to get up and, and um, get a big uh, lot of seed on, on the surface again. And this country had been bare since the 1970s as far as I know, and probably bare in the 60s too. So yeah, it's um, yeah, so 30 years of, of almost useless land and suddenly it's turned it into uh, one of the best areas around. I guess the, the the big thing is that um, when you've burnt an area, or even if you're burning a few thousand acres, you do get a massive influx of, uh, of kangaroos, emus, goats. You've, you've got to keep on top of it while you're, while you're getting those grasses re-established. You've got to be out there, um, either have a, a roo shooter employed, um, or, uh, or be prepared to get out there and just keep hunting the roos and emus off. Goats, of course, if they happen to come in and they love the green stuff, uh, muster them up and uh, it's, it's paying for the, um, for the job of burning already, so they're good money in goats. You know, a few roos is okay, but um, a few hundred starting to be a problem. And the same with emus, goats and everything. Suddenly you've got that extra thousand head sort of flocking in. Uh, total grazing pressure, it's, it's one of those things that you've got to be vigilant, you know. You, 
you can't just walk away from it for a month and think, oh yeah, the grass is going to grow because when you go back out there, the grass hasn't grown. There's there's five or six hundred roos on it, and, and God knows what else. You know, you, uh, it's something you should get around that paddock at least once a week after burning and uh, take a bit of a look and, and and be aware of what's happening. I was against burning for many years, and I went around uh, pushing all the push scrub and chain scrub up into heaps, and then burning the heaps. I just didn't want a big fire through the place, thinking that it might burn all the grasses out and ruin the land. I was educated in the 1970s and, the, and that was a big push to um, uh, love an unburned country and uh, I, was, I was totally against fire. Uh, the turning point I think was more created out of the fact that everything else I was trying wasn't working and uh, I was getting nowhere. The scrub, as fast as I cleared it and pushed it into heaps and burnt the heaps, it just came up behind me and I didn't have any extra grasses and I guess the real turning point was one day we just said what the heck we're going to burn this paddock and see what happens and the results were spectacular and, uh, and it wasn't until we counted all those extra grasses on the ground that we realised just how good it was. Yeah, it's great. I would burn the drop of a hat now. I can burn a paddock out in four hours, two and a half thousand acres. If I had to go in and chain a paddock again and suffer all the logs all the time, it would take me nearly a month to chain down two and a half thousand acres with my gear. Yeah. It's proven to me this year and as it did even back in some of the drought years that rainfall doesn't matter. We've had six and a half inches this year and we've got feed galore. This land doesn't need a lot of water. It can get away with next to nothing. <laughs>